Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now I've been working away on this one. This is work in progress. I'm taking my time with it. So this is part two of this particular painting. So if you want to watch part one, check out the link in the description. But it's coming on nicely, I'm very pleased. So watch me paint it here and talk my usual random nonsense. So without further ado, let's do some painting. Hello, welcome to my latest video. Hope you're all keeping well and all that sort of jazz. Right, I'm going to uh, carry on from where I left off yesterday in my previous video. This is part two of painting a ship. So if you want to check out part one, have a look at the link in the description. So anyway, it is uh, size wise, can't remember what I said yesterday. I think it was 16 by 34 inches and uh, I've put just a layer, you know, the first base layer down, if you like, for the sea and what have you. Um, off camera, I marked out, um, just scratched in with my proportions ruler, where the ship's going to go. And um, I spent some time earlier just picking a reference image. And that's um, um, World War I Dreadnought Battleship affair so it's not going to look like that by the time i've finished with it but it just gives me an idea of proportions and where things are going so um that's that i'll put that there preferably where i can see it and we'll get going i'll get my um pilot cam turned on same colors as yesterday but i'll turn it on anyway because it's habit and i will see you in just a second right pilot cam is on a brief guided tour of my colors um, as I say, pretty much the same as yesterday, it's just all spread out a bit because I messed around with it. But a um, quick recap, I've got titanium white, I've got some nice sky blue just there, I've got um, turquoise, which I mix with some green, uh, phalo blue and titanium white, which is a nice colour. And I've uh, got some ultramarine blue mixed with a bit of um, titanium white just there. Which, is, with it being oils, it's still nice and usable. You know, if I was using acrylics, this would be dry and I'd have to start again. And this is a grey colour, which I mixed with burnt umber and ultramarine blue. I'm not going to add any zest it today, as I've, I've put me, I'm pointing at the painting, but you can't see it. But I, I, I used zest it yesterday as a medium, the first base layer, if you like. So I'm just going to apply the paint a bit thicker today. So, yeah, that's that, and I will see you in just a second. Right here, let's get going. Let's get some kind of a, a ship on. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do it um, this evening. Um, otherwise, it'll be a part three later on, but we'll see if we can get it all done now. So I'm just going to get some of that grey. I'm not getting much, just a little bit, on my triangular um part knife with a handle snapped off uh, and most of my things have the handle snapped off but there we go and just start doing some of the whole what i might do is put this uh, reference picture up here hopefully it won't fall off my bloody um easel it's just a, a guide for me to go off i'm not going to copy it Yeah, we're all keeping well and all that sort of thing. Bonfire night is fast approaching. We've got Halloween out of the way. Do like this time of year, you know. Because by the end of summer, I've had enough of summer. Too hot and busy. So it's nice getting into October and a bit of normality. Now, on the original photo, the, the deck seems to rise up a bit, just about that point. 
that's what I'll do. Got very shaky hands as you can see. I mean, you know, if you're a regular to my channel, you'll know I've got a sensual tremor. But it kind of adds to it if you're oil painting. There we go. I might go a bit further for now. That's that. Right, get my little palette knife now, just a, quite a small one, which is my favourite really. I love, love using it. Just start adding some um, bits of turret and things. I'm looking up because my picture's up there. I was meant to be going to a firework display this coming Friday. It's been called off with um, Storm What's Its Face on its way. I've always wondered who names these bloody storms. I bet whoever it is is on obscene amounts of money as well. You can imagine the big board meeting, can't you? Somewhere, I imagine in America. You know, trying to think of you know blue sky ideas for naming storms. We'll just go down the internet, down the alphabet. Oh, I know. We'll call it Alan this time. Oh yeah, brilliant. There's your Christmas bonus. Can't be the most difficult job in the world. If anyone knows, the, you know, who names them, let me know. Because frankly, I can't be asked to find out myself. It's not that important. A few bits and pieces going up. As I say, I'm not putting too much paint on. If I put it on too thick, you know, it, it's much easier to add paint on than it is to take paint off. So I, I just would put, you know, going on quite thick. If I put, if it goes on too thick, it gets all muddy and horrible. Right. Got a couple of funnel type things just there. There's one there. And there's another one just back of that one, say about there. Shaky hands again, God. I've got to use two hands sometimes. Kind of structure just there as well. So far, so good. If you can hear voices, it is my wife on the phone again. Having a nightly chit chat. Might not pick it up on the camera. Well, get my bigger palette knife again. I'll start adding on some, um, I don't know if you can see the picture. I'm at this point now, so I'm, I'm up to the top of that funnel. So I need to start adding some of these mast structure thingies. Yeah, we, growing up in the, in the village, we used to have some uh, incredible bonfire firework display thingies 
you know, before the days of health and safety and all that. Well, there's a certain degree of health and safety, but not a vast amount back then. And we used to, um, used to be around the back of the village pub in the beer garden. Right, small pot knife again. And I, you know, I, I tell this, everybody, every year, every November, I tell this story. But, um, what used to happen was the, the bonfire was built, you know, in, in the, the beer garden, as I say, next to a bloody huge propane tank. It was about the size of the room, I'm starting. You know, this big, uh, big propane tank thing with various gauges and knobs on it and stuff. And that, that supplied the pub with, uh, you know, gas, basically. And, um, you know, it'll be, this bonfire will be set up, um, I'd say about, not, not particularly far, about 20 metres away from this uh, propane cylinder. And um, perhaps not even that. And it was it was never a drama. Um, all that used to happen whenever it was bonfire night and the and they start lighting the fire before they lit the fire, they'd have they'd, they'd put a big mattress over the top of this uh, propane um, tank and buckets of water next to the propane tank. And all night there'd be someone from the parish council elected to keep the mattress wet while the bonfire were going on. <laughs> but, you know, you'd light the fire and the whole thing would heat up. You'd see steam rising off, off the wet mattress and um, you'd have to keep chucking more buckets of water on so it don't blow the village up. <laughs> Funny. And... Um, you know, the, the various adults and things in the village would put in the back of the hand against the, the propane tank and they go, oh, it's grand, be right. Got another, another few hours in that, you know. <laughs> God, I mean, like Hiroshima if that thing had gone up. But um, I, I won't think for a minute that um, they'd do it now. They'd, they'd, they'd put the bonfire somewhere else. Whoops, that's a slight mistake there, but that doesn't matter. You can hide it. My shaky hands. Right. My long palette knife. Again, surprise, surprise, handle snapped off. Yeah, um, all the kids in the village, i.e. me and all my mates, it was also used to build the bonfire, but we'd, we'd start it in um you know end of july you know in or august or whatever early august when the, the school holidays kicked in the six week holidays and uh we'd we'd all build the bonfire and so you can imagine how big it was you know by the time we'd finished with it it's absolutely colossal this bonfire but um, we used to, you know, as we're building it, we used to lace it with um, camping gas cylinders and um, aerosols, you know, cans of deodorant and air freshener, everything you can imagine, everything that could go bang. We used to lace it with that, so the, the whole bonfire is enormous, full of, explosives effectively and someone had, had light it and you know all the, the village would be watching this bonfire about 300 of us or whatever and every now and again go bang and everyone would duck and you know one of the, the 
camping gas cylinders would have cooked off and gone gone skyward you know be a big fireball and um you know it'll, be, it'll go in pop and bang and you know f the fire be going half an hour because we, we've blown it all up basically but yeah it, it got, it, they all adults go what the hell was that and we were like oh well, i don't know yeah mystery it's every year year in year out which uh caused whoops of delight amongst the, the kids in the village. Yeah, it's uh, coming on, right. Do some more. Now there's three things, there's that one there. One there. One there. Good stuff. Um, small part knife. Yeah, good times in the village, good memories. Yeah, we're very fortunate that so there's no crime at all, you know, nothing like that. It's not like now, it just seems pretty lawless now. Because, you know, in the village, the second someone farted, you knew about it. And that was the days before internet and things like that, obviously mobile phones there'd be a unofficial telephone trick <laughs> you know as soon as something happened uh, the, the whole village oh i must phone kath and you know the phone kath and then kath phone oh i'll well, phone ruth and it'll go it'll spread around the village so within 10 minutes something happened the village villager know about it you know <laughs> it um Chimney fires used to be a used to be the most exciting thing that had happened because we all had you know proper coal fires and you know the second there was a chimney fire somewhere oh well I'll phone Alison you know to be around the village and then uh, half the village will be out watching. Yeah, sometimes something dramatic will happen. You know, if you watch Emmerdale, it couldn't be more further from the truth. Because, you know, in a, in a little rural village, it's far quieter than Emmerdale, you know, and midsummer murders and all that sort of thing. Someone gets murdered every day. <laughs> yeah. Not into soaps, so my knowledge is very limited. Sort of fun to that hull out a bit. Extend that backwards. But yeah, this is uh, coming on kind of nicely. We're getting there. Well, what I'll do now is just get my long pallet knife again, the scraper. Just little bit of paint start adding dabbing on little lines and cables and all that kind of thing Uh, washing machine's going, so if that picks up on the recording, I apologise. I did not think that through when I loaded the washing machine. Right, I might put some, um, what do you call it, um, dazzle camouflage. I'm a big fan of that at the minute. 
um, although the original hasn't got the dazzle camo on. But now we're on with a bit of artistic license. So yeah, a little bit of titanium white. I don't know why I'm looking at the picture because I haven't got the dazzle camera on, I just have to make it up. There we go. I'll put a bit of blue on as well. It's uh, kind of blending with the, the grey a bit, that doesn't matter because you know you want to expect dazzle camouflage or anything white on the ship to be pristine when it's been at sea, particularly wartime conditions. Ah, washing machine stopped. Good. Let's put some highlights up here as well. It's just an illusion, all of this. Just fools the eye into thinking it's a ship. It's actually a load of blobs. That's all it is. Yeah, granted it doesn't look much at the minute, but it will do. Well, I just had a bit of a suggestion of a gun just there, and perhaps another one. Something there as well, a few things sticking up. Afford to go a bit further out of the front. Mm, it's kind of looking ship shaped. Be careful what I say. Some, I, you know, I don't really show my work at, in my day job at work, I don't really show anybody because I'm embarrassed. But uh, there was a colleague, he, was, he heard I, I could do a bit of painting and uh, he said, oh, we'll have a look. Do you mind if I have a see? And the first one he saw was a ship pa uh, painting. And I, I thought he said it was a shit painting. <laughs> and staff, he was like, <gasps> But no, he's going, no, 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 ship, ship, ship. <laughs> yeah, we've got, I believe you. <laughs> a few more highlights going on. <laughs> Looks more like a destroyer, actually, than a big battleship. But there we go. It's all good fun anyway.
bear with me, I'll concentrate. Oh, I keep leaning back in the chair, I'm going to go off one day. Put some blue at the back. You know, I've seen, you know, colourised photographs of uh, World War One ships, you know, at Dazzle Camouflage. And World War Two, and, you know, you, you assume it's just black and white, but they had uh, bits of blue on as well. You know, it's just to confuse U-boat commanders and the targeting systems, rather than camouflage the ship. But yeah, if you're interested, read up on um, um, Dazzle Camouflage. It's an interesting read. Right. Might put some uh, lines on now, dark shapes. Not too bad, not perfect. I might put another funnel affair there because the, the first funnel I did is kind of merged with that bridge structure. So I'll put that there and just increase the height of that one a little bit. Not bad. We all get in there. Well, I'm going to have a, a brief break just to breathe, just to have a look what's going on and uh, take my time a little bit. So, um, obviously, you won't be sat for 10 minutes while I'm sat here looking. You'll uh, literally see me in a second's time because I'll cut the video. So, yeah, quick break and I'll be back in just a second. Right, I'll continue on. Had a brief break. i put something just there could be guns or something i don't know there's a bit of a structure there or suggestion of something there as well Another gun extending out there a little bit. Yeah, speaking of bonfires and health and safety and all that sort of thing. Um, we, oh God, we, we used to have all kinds of things, you know, the traffic lights that um, used to go up. And I remember one year um, the traffic light fell and it fired a salvo <laughs> um, traffic light into the crowd. <laughs> you know, it's just detonating amongst the, amongst the audience. Yeah, but we just all took it in a stride and carried on. <laughs> no one's ever hurt. Yeah, it used to be members of the PTA or whatever with yellow jackets running about with a, a torch and lighting. The fireworks, great memories. But uh, the day after the the bonfire, you know, we'll all go to bed and everything like that, and get up the next morning. Or oh, if we had school, we'd come back after school, we'd get off the bus and race to the fire. Because it was normally still going, you know, it was embers and everything like that. And we'd start it going again. We'd find everything we could possibly burn and uh, honour to go with fire and off it go again. So it used to be uh, lots of good fun for those kids. And then, you know, when it was finished, we start collecting wood again for next year. So we always had a massive collection of wood.
And a few highlights here as well. Yeah, it's, it's not really looking like a battleship, as I say. It's a bit, it's a bit compact. It's more like a destroyer, but it's good practice. I'm learning every day as I go. Something there. I'll put that there. Something sticking up off the bow of the front bit of the ship, something off the back as well. There we go. Yeah, it looks like a, a you know submarine chaser. Uh, what I might do is just blur this, uh, blur the um, the bottom bit of the ship. The keel just uh, make it look like it's actually in the sea and not on top of it. Bear with me concentrating again. Just kind of it taping off a bit down at this end, try and make it look like, just give the illusion it's a bit of a, an angle. Like so, that's a bit better. It was all looking a bit flat a minute ago, that's more like it. Just gives it a bit of perspective. Yeah, happy, 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 happy. Um, I don't know whether or not to do, yeah, yeah, I might do, um, you know, uh, a part three tomorrow because I don't want to rush it, I don't want to screw things up. So, I'm going to really take my time with it. So, I am enjoying it so far. I'd love, you know, a wake and waves and all sorts of things. I'll probably have a ship or two in the distance, maybe an aircraft carrier. Don't know yet. So, anyway, we've got a ship. Um, it was meant to be a battleship, it's more of a destroyer. But yeah, I am I am happy. There's uh, nothing wrong with that. So I hope you like. Um, don't forget part one is in the description. Check out part one. This is part two and I'll do part three tomorrow and just keep chipping away at it. So don't forget to subscribe. It does mean a heck of a lot and it encourages me to keep painting and keep filming because it's a lot of effort so yeah thank you so much for watching um also on instagram facebook and johnkid.co.uk so thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye bye